Today I'll be explaining 17.3 current and resistance. Now what is current? Current is the movement of an electric charge. Now electric current. Electric current is the rate at which electric charges pass through a given area. The formula is I, so electric current is represented by I. And I is the current. So I equals to delta Q, which is the charge, over delta T, which is the time, time or time interval. Then we have the unit is ampere A, or you could call it, uh, or you could write it, coulomb per second for the Q, which is coulomb, and for the time, which is in second. Now, as you can see here in the picture, that the current is moving to the opposite direction of the negative charges. The negative charges are moving to the left, while the current is moving to the right. Now let's do some practices. If the current of a wire of a CD player is 5 milliampere, how long would it take for two column of charge to pass through a cross-sectional area of this wire? So the given is 5 milliampere, which is the I, the current, and then two column, which is the delta Q. So the givens are the I, which is 5 milliampere, which is going to be 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3, Ampere, and then the delta Q is 2 column. So the formula would be, we said that I equals to delta Q over time, over delta T. We, if we switch it around, because they want us to find the time, how long. When they say how long, that means they want the time. So it's going to be delta T equals to delta Q over I. So delta Q is 2 over 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So the delta T will be 4 times 10 to the power of 2 seconds. So the unit length is in seconds. Now moving on to the second question. In a particular television tube, the beam current is 60 microampere. How long does it take? So here they're also again asking for the time. How long does it take for 3.75 times 10 to the power of 14 electrons to strike the screen. Hint is that recall that an electron has a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulomb. So let's take out the givens. So we have the current which is the I equals to 60 micro ampere and micro is times 10 to the power of negative 6 so it will equal to 60 times 10 to the power of negative 6 ampere. And then they said 3.75 times 10 to the power of 4. So this is, remember, recall that this is when they say electrons, that they mean the N. So the N would be N equals to 3.75 times 10 to the power of 14 electrons. And then they told us here that an so the N equals to 3.75 times 10 to the power of 14 electrons. Now the Q is, because here they said charge and that there's the hint of the column, the unit. So Q equals to without the negative 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 column. Now the formula, they want us to find the time because they asked how long. So delta T would equal to delta Q over the I. Now we need to how to find the delta Q is that we have to multiply N times the Q over the I. So it would be N which is 3.75 times 10 to the power of 14, then times the Q, the small Q, which is the 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19, over the I, which is 60 times 10 to the power of negative 6. So delta T would equal to 1 second. That's the answer. And the unit would be also second. So, yeah. Now moving on to resistance. Resistance is the position to the motion of a charge through a conductor. So the formula is R equals to delta V over the I. So delta V, remember, it's the potential difference, and the I is the electric current. The unit is ohm, and or you could write it as this symbol. And as you as you know, uh, as you will know that the R is inversely proportional to the I, and it's directly proportional to the delta V. So as the resistance increases, the delta V increases. But then as the resistance increases, the, the I would decrease, as here. Now the four physical factors that affect resistance. First, length, 
then the width which is the thickness or you could call it cross section area and then the third temperature and the fourth is matter or mater uh, material which an example could be like metal so now let's talk in detail now the factors that affect resistance first let's begin with the length now the smaller the length will be the less resistance and the greater current then on the other hand the the taller the length or the greater the length would be the greater the, the resistance and less the current so as the length increases we could say that the resistance also increases with it but then the current decreases now the second factor thickness now the thicker the wire the less resistance and the greater current but then on the other hand the thinner the wire the greater resistance and the less the current now the third uh, the third factor which is the material or the matter or as you can see here metals we have here copper and here we have iron so copper let's say it has less resistance and greater current but then the iron it has a greater resistance and less current so it's opposite to each other now the fourth factor which is temperature now if the temperature is low that means the resistance is less and the current is large but then if the temperature was high there is a greater resistance and less current so it's also opposite to each other now let's talk about ohmic materials and non ohmic materials now any material that follows ohm's law is called ohmic material so as you can see in this graph that it's a straight line so you notice that it's an ohmic material so the relationship between i and delta v is constant but then the other one, and any material that does not follow Ohm's law is called non-ohmic material. So as you can see here in this graph that it's curved. And it's not straight as in here. So here, the relationship between the I and the delta V is not constant. An example is diodes, which is a non-ohmic material. Now, finally, we have the practice. Now the first question is, a 1.5 volts battery is connected to a small light bulb with a resistance of 3.5 ohm. So remember this is ohm, so they mean the R, and here this is the delta V. What is the current in the bulb? So they want us to find current, which is the I. So let's take out the givens. So we have delta V, which is 1.5 volts, and then we have the R resistance, which is 3.5 ohm. And then they want us to find the I, which is the current. So the formula would be, we said that the R equals to delta V over I. So if we move things around, so I would be delta V over R. So delta V, we said that's 1.5 over the R, which is 3.5. So the answer would be, so 1.5 over 3.5, so it will be 0. 43 ampere ampere so ampere is the unit of the current because they asked for the current now the second question a stereo with the resistance of 65 ohm is connected across potential difference of 120 volts 120 volts what is the current in the de in this device so the givens are 65 ohm which is the resistance and then there uh, is the potential difference which is delta v which is 120 volts, they want us to find the current, which is the I. So let's take out the givens. R equals to 65 ohm. And then the delta V equals to 120 volts. And then they want us to find the current. So we use again the same formula, I equals to delta V over R. So the delta V would be 120 over the R, which is 65. So the I would be 1.8 ampere ampere which is the unit of the current electric current thank you and i hope you understand